right, so Apex has finally released a new mode as part of Apex Legends Legacy, aka Season 9, like most people like to call it. And Arena is pretty fun, I've got to say. I've spent the last week pretty much playing it in and out with teammates and with randoms. And I've got a little bit of thoughts. First and foremost, the Spitfire. Woo, but my thoughts are basically gonna boil down to weapons, maps, legends, and the buy menu. So if you wanna hear my first impressions and just overall thoughts on Arena, make sure you stick around. What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to my channel. It is Miss Jordy bringing you some more Apex Legends content. I'm going to be prioritizing Apex a lot. So if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Stay up to date with everything I've got going on, dropping videos at least once a week. So getting adjusted to a new work schedule. But anyway, like I said in the intro, we've got Arena finally in the game. First and foremost, I wanna break down my thoughts on Arena into four categories. First of all, it's maps, legends, weapons, and then the buy menu. Before I jump into everything, I just want to share my overall thoughts. I think it's a really fun game mode. Arena has brought a new edge to Apex. I think a lot of people are really enjoying it. Obviously, across the timeline, people are very excited to play the new mode. And also, you get games really quickly, which is really fun. So even if you lose, even if you win, if you win straight matches, obviously, if you get into the tiebreakers, that's when your games do sort of draw out. But I definitely think it's way easier, it's way quicker. And if you're just looking to either warm up for Battle Royale, and warm up for ranked, or if you're just looking to play casually and just have a good time, Arenas is the perfect part of Apex for you. So that's my thoughts, so let's get into a little bit more of the details. First, let's start off with maps. So I've pretty much played them all really consistently, I believe, at this point. So I have can honestly say that I feel like Respawn and EA did a really good job making the maps pretty evenly distributed so it's not too many overly high ground places on one side of the map versus the other and I think the teams can both use the sides to their advantage no matter which side they spawn on. That being said, Phase Runner and Mirage Voyage, the two maps that are pretty much new that are dedicated to the game, I'm loving those the most so far. We've only played three of the five maps so far, so Artillery, Phase Runner, and Party Crasher. And honestly, I really, really like um, the Phase Runner map and Party Crasher is the most. Artillery, gosh. And I'll get into that a little bit later, but I'm not a huge fan of Artillery whatsoever. I just think the play style, it gets a little cheesy and I understand there is a place for people who play distance and having someone sit on top and strategically looking down while your other teammate is going for meds and things like that. I think there's definitely a place and room for that, especially if you just want to play zone but it hasn't really been my style. Arenas really, I feel like, isn't going to be that really until ranked. And again, I can get into a little bit more of that toward the end. I've got all my notes down. But in all honesty, artillery is definitely not my favorite. It's just, I don't know, I've got a lot of thoughts on it. And I don't think it's a bad map. I think it definitely calls for you to play a little bit more strategic. Whereas on Phase Runner and Mirage Voyage, I've seen much more like close quarter fights a lot more like run and gun less like okay let's just scope them out see what they're gonna do and wait you know it's just a lot more head-to-head -head, just com combative i guess you could say so i liked that style i do think that once ranked comes around i think overall arena is going to slow down quite a bit and teams aren't just gonna dive in, they're gonna really consider their RP and how they wanna play strategically, and then you'll start seeing a lot more teams. I'm noticing a lot of duos um, when I play, but just in my opinion, that's how it's been so far. So, but, so next I wanna talk about some legends. So I've played 
pretty much all of them, maybe not every single one in arenas, but there are a couple that I'm noticing are getting a lot more play than others. Obviously, for those that don't know, Lifeline and Rampart. I'm seeing a lot more Lifeline and a lot more Rampart, which is something I wasn't really expecting initially, especially with Rampart. I definitely was not expecting that whatsoever. And also Bloodhound, um, but Bloodhound is just widely popular across both game modes. In this season, Lifeline actually loses her re <laughs> loses her revive shield. So a lot of people were pretty discouraged about that with her, even saying that the character is pretty useless now at this point. I, I do agree that I think overall her kit needs a total rework. I think honestly, Lifeline needs just a whole revision to how she'll be viable into the game. But Lifeline's ability when your teammate goes down, especially if you have limited meds, to revive your teammate and then also that gold backpack. If you have your Lifeline, use that gold backpack and then also revive your teammates pretty much back into the fight almost immediately. So I think that draws into a lot of the strengths of Lifeline. So if you are a team, I think you should definitely consider using lifeline especially if you're not prioritizing the meds if you want to get back in the fight really really quickly and i think that's the beauty of lifeline right now and that's why she sees so much play in arenas and it's sort of similar for rampart but i think rampart's passive with the lmgs obviously is a huge boost and given the state of the spitfire right now despite the nerf that the devs did do i still think the spitfire is very viable and quite frankly still one of the best weapons in Apex Legends right now. So that's why we see a lot more Rampart just in general. Ramparts and then the clip and then once you have that Spitfire on max and I guess maximum upgrade and then you also combine that with Ramparts passive, it is ridiculously strong in arenas and quite frankly you don't have to reload until you've knocked the whole team. I've done it, I've tried it myself so I can speak to the fact that it is busted, okay? So that definitely leads me into my next point about weapons. The Spitfire is so strong obviously everyone is using it it's a little annoying but it's really strong so why not whatever it takes to win right like in all honesty but really quick before i move on to weapons a couple of the legends that i also really like playing i think valkyrie is really good in arenas especially if you like you don't really need to buy ultimates i sort of never buy ultimates in arenas unless absolutely necessary um like I would say Bangalore and Gibraltar's ults are really, really good in for zoning in um, arenas. But overall, I think Lifeline and Rampart and Bloodhound are three of probably the most popular legends that I'm noticing. And of course, Valkyrie, just because she's pretty new to the game and everybody wants this legend that, like, I saw a meme back in the day that legends literally only made a decoy and now we have a legend that can fly, shoot rockets out of her back, can bloodhound scan when she skydives, has missiles going everywhere. Literally, literally Valkyrie can do anything and everything, which is why I think she gets a lot of love right now. And um, I, I feel like she's in a pretty good state though because most of her abilities well has quite a bit of time of cooldown so yeah i think those four are really the most popular legends i don't see loba used at all which is understandable because her black market is pretty useless and her um her bracelet doesn't really need to be used either um i really personally have enjoyed playing revenant as well because i think especially if you get a bloodhound on the other team the silences can be super beneficial bangalore is obviously also very powerful in arenas so all of the i feel like every legend has its strengths in arenas bangalore especially because one tip i'll give you is if you want to maximize your use of bangalore re upgrade the p2020 all the way to maximum in the first in the first round because you get the digital threat so then you can literally smoke out the enemies and then go up and shoot them and then after that after the first round if you win it obviously if you lose it you can still do this too but then you want to max the r99 because of the digital threat and then you can still smoke them out and you'll still be able to see them through the smoke because obviously now if you haven't noticed the smoke is 
thick with two C's, okay? So <laughs> it's very easy to get lost in there, but if you do that tip with the digital threat, it'll definitely make you very dangerous to play against. So imagine having a Lifeline Rampart and a Bangalore or a Bloodhound on one team. It's very scary, so that's just a little quick tip I thought I'd share too. So back over to weapons. The Spitfire, everyone uses it. It's really annoying, but you know, you have to play, everybody's out for the win. That's the name of the game. So the Spitfire is definitely very, very popular. The bow, I could do an entire bow first impressions video. If you want that, make sure you leave a like on the video or tell me in the comment section if you want me to share my thoughts on the bow check bow. But oh my God, I have so many opinions about it. Apparently, and I've seen the pros, it's very, very easy to use. So it doesn't take much thought, it doesn't take much effort, especially once it's maxed, you get the, um, you get the hop ups immediately. So it's very difficult um, to play against. I want to say I played against somebody who was possibly a hacker. He might not have been hacking. He might just have literally known exactly where I was every time I peeked, but very difficult to play against in distance which is a strong reason why i dislike artillery because it really favors the distance fight so you have to really make sure you cut that distance really quickly but if you're playing someone who has very good aim and very good skill with the bow it will be lights out so the bow is very dangerous the spitfire is equally dangerous um i don't see the snipers getting as much love as um those two or other lmgs but i i personally really love to use the flat line in arenas i think the flat line is very strong um it does not have much recoil and because like i said earlier i like to take the close-up fights i really think it's very simple um and just overall it's a very strong weapon especially once it's maxed if people do want to fight you from distance you have the option with the anvil receiver to poke them in single fire so i really like the flat line it also only costs 500 materials instead of 550 like the spitfire and the r301 and i still feel like even though it's really not the r301 it's still a very viable option especially if you're able to get out ahead of teams um early on so what i usually like to do for my buy pattern is i'll start with either the r99 or the spitfire um in the first round and then after we collect our materials and hopefully win obviously the first round i typically go with the spitfire i mean the flat line and just max it so that's those are the weapons i love what weapons do you love in arenas let me know down in the comment section below and finally the buy menu so at first i cannot lie when i first tried the buy menu it was very intimidating i was like what the heck which one do i buy which one do, 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 do? and luckily i was playing with somebody who had played arenas a couple of times and he recommended the spitfire so naturally i did play the spitfire um quite often i think in my opinion the buy menus interface is a little difficult to understand and quite honestly it's a little overwhelming um because it's so much the time is very short and um i was talking to someone who frequently plays valorant and he says that that's about standard for the time for um buy menus whether that's valorant or csgo or whatever game types you play or games you play so i just thought it was very interesting and i was like wow this is very overwhelming very intimidating but after playing a couple games i realized i do still really like this bit far and um i think it's very strong and very good so with that being said um yeah i also think there is no point in saving I know that in the trailer for arenas, it said that you can choose to save rounds or you can choose to um, rework or you can choose to go all out some rounds, save rounds. I just don't think it's necessary in arenas. I think you can get one good weapon with the way Apex Legends plays. And most of you will know this from playing Battle Royale it's very quick it's very fast the gunfights honestly if you run into a team if you're one of the more aggressive style teams unless you are fighting from distance with a sniper or something like that most of the times the fights are very quick and 
in a blink of an eye, you will lose depending on your positioning, how you use your environment and things like that. But I really don't think it's enough time to buy meds. Um, I don't think you have to buy meds. I just max out one weapon um, because they still give you a PP20, which is what I like to call it, or a P2020 or a Mozambique. Um, so either way, especially in the later rounds, you can probably buy an RE45 or an alternator. But I don't think it's a point in saving. I say spend your crafting materials. You can always get 200 more, which really feels good. Like if you haven't, collect the crafting materials that are on the floor and fight for those because honestly those feel so good in the buy menu it's ridiculous so don't save try a couple of weapons try a couple of strong guns that you feel very comfortable on i noticed a lot of volts a lot of bows a lot of spitfires everybody plays with a spitfire r301s r99s are also popular and i personally really enjoy playing with the flat line um but yeah buy full every time don't save collect the crafting materials that are on the ground and you'll be fine i never feel like i'm short on you know weapons or anything like that i always feel very comfortable in the buy mode and i think eventually that will probably change in arenas i think that they'll probably make some adjustments um, to weapons and things like that and who knows they might change the tuning for some guns to be different in battle royale versus arenas which would really be interesting and again i also think just from final thoughts as i wrap up that arenas will play very differently once ranked comes around i think they'll be much more slower much more thought out similar to um actual ranked in battle royale or even aogs if you watch esports so i definitely think the arenas will change but so far it's very fun i think it's great for warm-ups you don't really need comms on it because depending on where the circle is going to spawn that will definitely depend on where the other team is going to face off against you and most of the times the fights aren't like drawn out it's a very quick fight the ring moves in very fast so it's it's very fast paced and it's no point in sitting around waiting just take the fight win the fight win the game so that's gonna do it for my thoughts and first impressions on arenas let me know if you want to see some gameplay and your thoughts on arenas down below in the comment section and also make sure you follow me across all my social media channels to check out some of my other content thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one bye guys